If you are visiting Great Smoky Mountains National Park, here are five things that you'll definitely want to know before you go. Hey friend, my name is Ash. I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes. And today we are talking all about Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This national park is incredible. It's one of the most exciting and beautiful national parks in the country. And so let's talk about the five things that you need to know before you visit. Number one, Great Smoky Mountains is a complex national park. So as far as acreage goes, it's not as big as some other parks, um, say like Yellowstone, but it is quite complex. Uh, the reason being that it's just very highly visited. There's a lot of roads that you can go on. There's a lot of side roads. There's, you know, the main roads that go through the park. You're going up and around through the mountains. And so it does get complex as you're trying to plan a trip. Taking a look at the map of Great Smoky Mountains National Park, you'll notice there are a lot of roads that go around the park. There's a few that go through it. And so I kind of want to talk you through what you're going to be looking at as you're planning your trip. The main thing being that because you're driving through the mountains, you are going up and down in elevation, the roads get really windy and curvy, and so a lot of people underestimate the amount of time that it's going to take to drive from place to place. For example, we have the Sugarlands Visitor Center right in here, and that's right next to the entrance by Gatlinburg, and so it gets really busy here, but a lot of people start their vacation from this area. And the Sugarlands Visitor Center a lot of people are trying to get out here to Cades Cove. Cades Cove is the most popular area of the park to visit. And so a lot of people are driving along this road here. Now you can see kind of from the map how curvy and windy it gets, but this is only about 25 miles from the Sugarlands Visitor Center over into the beginning of Cades Cove. It will take approximately an hour to drive this 25 mile stretch of road. So you do want to keep that in mind as you're planning your trip because although on the map it might look like, oh yeah, that's not that far, it is windy, it's curvy, it's narrow, all the roads through the park are only two lanes, so you are traveling quite slowly, you're going up and down, you're curving around, so it does take a while to get from place to place in this park. So when you're planning your trip to the Great Smoky Mountains, you'll definitely want to keep that in mind, that the mileages can be a little bit deceiving. That will help you as you're trying to plan out your lodging, as you're trying to decide what activities to add into your itinerary, because you'll wanna make sure that you budget enough time to get from place to place on these um, elevation roads and these curvy and windy mountain roads. If any of this is feeling overwhelming for you as you're trying to navigate this complex national park, just know that I have a ton of information for you at Dirt In My Shoes. You can get all the information that you need as far as how to get there, is it open year round, how many days should you spend. I even have a fully planned out itinerary so you don't even have to guess how long it's going to take you to get from place to place and where the best place to stay is so that you're not spending your whole trip in the car. Number two, lodging in the Great Smoky Mountains is scarce. What I mean by this is that you actually won't find very many places to stay within the national park itself. Or uh, there are quite a few campgrounds, but only a few of them will be ideal for your first trip to the park. So keep that in mind and I'll kind of talk you through what to expect as far as lodging in the Great Smoky Mountains. The first thing you'll want to know is that there is only one lodge in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which is quite surprising for how busy it is and how popular it is. Uh, and in addition to there only being one lodge, this lodge, the LeConte Lodge is what it's called, is located at the top of a mountain. And so you have to hike to get here. You can't drive to this lodge. It's a really cool experience, but it's a little bit untraditional compared to what you might see at other national parks. So the LeConte Lodge, as I mentioned, you have to hike to this lodge and there's five different trails you can take to get up here. So I just wanna quickly show you here on this map. Here's the lodge right here on the top of Mount LeConte. And so you can take the Alum Cave Trail, the Boulevard Trail, you've got the Bullhead Trail, Rainbow Falls Trail, and the Trillium Gap Trail. So all five of those trails will get you to the top. And just depending on how far you wanna hike or what you wanna see along the way, you know, is how you'll decide your route if you decide to stay in this lodge. 
The LeConte Lodge provides meals, they have bedding for you, so you really just need to get yourself and your stuff up there. And then you can stay on top of the mountain, enjoy the beautiful Smoky Mountain sunrises and sunsets, and have a really unique experience. For camping, there are actually 10 different front country campgrounds in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and so you do have a good variety as far as what campgrounds are available to you. However, not all campgrounds are great for a first time visitor, and let me tell you why. So if we look at a map, I'll show you kind of the main park roads here. So you've got this road here, the Little River Road. You've got the Newfoundland Gap Road, which goes through the park here. And those really are the main roads that go through Great Smoky Mountains National Park. But you'll also notice as you're looking around the park boundaries here, there's a lot of little roads that cut down into the park here. And so there are other ways to access the park. You know, you just take these little short roads into here and typically these roads are very, very narrow and can be hard to get into. But also these side roads don't connect to the main park roads here. So what that does is it makes it so that you can't get to the main can't miss spots in the park without going out and around to one of these main roads out here. So as you look at this map, you can see there are some campgrounds. A lot of the campgrounds in Great Smoky Mountains are down these side roads. So you can see one here at Cosby, there's one here at Big Creek, there's one at Cataloochee, Balsam Mountain, Deep Creek, Abrams Falls, Look Rock, all of these are down these short little side roads. And these ones are fine to stay in, but for a first time visitor, I definitely would try to stay along the main park roads. So that means you're looking at campgrounds such as the one here in Cades Cove, which connects along this main road here. The Elkmont Campground is right here, right off the main road. And then you've got Smokemont down here, which is just right off the Newfoundland Gap Road. So if you can stay in one of those three campgrounds, it actually makes it so much easier to get around the park and to get to the main camp miss areas. And again, I don't have anything against all of those little campgrounds on the side roads. Uh, there are some really beautiful areas that you can camp in on those side roads. But if you're a first time visitor and you wanna see all the main things and you don't wanna miss out on anything and you wanna to go to the more popular sites, then I definitely would try to stay in either Cades Cove, Elkmont, or Smokemont. Now, the nice thing about Great Smoky Mountains is you are in a pretty populated area, and so there are plenty of options outside of the park. A lot of people stay here in Gatlinburg. This is the town that just has a million activities. You'll never run out of things to do in Gatlinburg. You may also go up into Pigeon Forge. A lot of people just stay along this stretch here. The other entrance town up here is Townsend, which is right over here. This is the quieter side of the Smokies, but you can find some great lodging options over here. And then the last gateway town is down on the southern part of the park, and that's Cherokee right over here. And Cherokee, again, is a smaller town or like Townsend, but you will find some lodging options down here. And so if you're not able to get anything in the park, that's okay you will have plenty of options just right outside the park entrances. Number three, Great Smoky Mountains National Park is crowded. Okay, so we gotta talk this through because Great Smoky Mountains National Park is the number one most visited national park in the country. It sees over 14 million people per year, which is just insane because the next visited national park is closer to about 5 million per year. So Great Smoky Mountains is almost triple the other national parks that are very busy. So uh, this park, you'll definitely need to take that into consideration as you're planning your trip because it makes a huge difference if you can plan things out so that you're not getting stuck in the crowds. So in this national park, timing is everything. You'll want a time when you're going through the entrance stations. You'll want a time when you're driving through the town of Gatlinburg because that can get super crazy with lots of traffic. Finding parking in this park, driving from place to place, like all of it, if you time it wrong, then you're sitting in traffic for a good amount of your day. So the things that you can control, you can control when you enter the park, again, that timing of when you're trying to get through Gatlinburg and get in through the park entrance makes a huge difference. Um, you can 
control how many off the beaten path stops that you add into your schedule so that you're not just going to the busy places all day, every day. That can get a little bit miserable. Um, you can decide when you wanna try to get parking at those busiest places. So I mentioned before, you know, Cades Cove is very busy. Um, Clingman's Dome is very busy. The Newfang Gap uh, Overlook is very busy. And so there are certain parts of the park that you will want to time carefully so that you're not trying to get parking there at the craziest parts of the day. You will want to expect some traffic if there's a wildlife sighting. You know, those are the fun types of traffic jams you can get stuck in. And if you want any help with any of this, click on over to Dirt in My Shoes. I have trip itineraries. I have one specifically for Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And so you can get a completely planned out schedule that will take you through the park at the best times of day. So you won't be sitting in traffic. You'll be able to find parking. That is very, very important to me, and that's what I can help you do with a Great Smoky Mountains itinerary. Number four, Great Smoky Mountains National Park does not charge an entrance fee. So this might surprise you because we just talked about how it is the number one most visited national park in the nation, and they don't charge an entrance fee. So it is a little bit weird, uh, but basically when Great Smoky Mountains was designated a national park and when the state of Tennessee gave the roads that go through Great Smoky Mountains over to the National Park Service to manage, uh, it was put in place that there could not be a toll on those roads. And so that means that they are not able to charge an entrance fee as you're driving along the roads through the park. However, Starting on March 1st, 2023, they are going to start charging for parking tags. So if you're wanting to go to the Great Smoky Mountains and you're wanting to park and get out of your car at any stop within the National Park Service boundary, then you will need one of these parking tags. So you can get more information on the Great Smoky Mountains website. There's a lot of information here still as they're kind of getting it going and Depending on when you're watching this video, it may already be in place. So definitely keep that in mind as you're planning your trip to the Smokies and know that this is a brand new thing that they're starting to do so that they can gather some type of fee from all the people that are visiting the park. I used to be a park ranger and so I do feel pretty strongly that a park should gather at least some type of fee to help with the maintenance and to help with all the park rangers that are out there uh, monitoring things, cleaning things up. You know, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes in each national park and those projects take funding. And so I am pretty excited actually that the Great Smoky Mountains um, is figuring out how to gather fees from the millions and millions and millions of people that come through this park. That money is desperately needed for a lot of different projects in the Smokies. And so I'm pretty excited to see that they'll be able to do more, keep things nicer, keep things cleaner, keep things safer by using those parking fees. One last thing you'll want to note is that because it's a parking fee and not an entrance fee, then your America the Beautiful annual pass will not count. So you will still need to pay the parking fee as you go to the park and as you get out and explore. And the last thing that you'll wanna know before visiting Great Smoky Mountains National Park is that this park has a very rich history and lots of great hiking trails. So the cool thing about Great Smoky Mountains National Park is there are a lot of historic buildings. There is so much South Appalachian heritage just all throughout this park. And so it's a really cool learning experience. You get to see a different way of life. You get to learn more about the people that lived here before the park became a park. And so it's a really cool learning cultural experience as you're traveling through the Smokies and getting out and exploring these historic areas. I think that's why Cades Cove is such a popular area of the national park, because not only do you get the beautiful Great Smoky Mountain views, you get to see wildlife and stuff like that, but you also get just such a rich immersion into the history of Great Smoky Mountains and this particular area of the mountain living. And so it's really cool because as you're driving through Cades Cove, you're seeing historic homes, churches, grist mills, cabins, barns. You get to see all of these things that get to help us 
better understand and learn about the people who lived in this area. Kate's Cove isn't the only place in Great Smoky Mountains where you can see the older buildings and really get a taste for the Appalachian culture, but uh, it is probably the best place to go if you're wanting to see a lot in a relatively small place. But you could also visit uh, the Mountain Farm Museum, you've got Mingus Mill, you've got uh, an area along the Roaring Fork Nature Trail that has some old buildings that you can tour. So there is just a lot of really cool areas of the Great Smokies where you can immerse yourself in its rich history. My website, Dirt in My Shoes, is called Dirt in My Shoes because I love to hike, so I would be remiss if I didn't mention how much good hiking there is in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. You've got over 800 miles of hiking trails, which is just crazy. That's an awesome amount of hiking. And um, in addition to that, you actually have 70 miles of the Appalachian Trail that just goes right through the park. And so if you're a big hiker, you've probably heard of the Appalachian Trail, but uh, this scenery that you'll see along the trail in Great Smoky Mountains is unrivaled. It is so beautiful. You can hike to waterfalls. You can hike to mountaintops, you're hiking through forests. It's just a really great way to see the Smokies. So there you have it, the five things that you need to know before visiting Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I am so excited for you to visit this amazing place where you'll just be immersed in such a rich history. You'll be surrounded by beautiful mountain views and so many fun things to do. And I can't wait for you to have a big adventure in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Safe travels.